fans get one free admission to the Ralph's Ultimate Tailgate Experience. Select USC football home games this fall when you purchase $35 of participating items at Ralph's. Look for the signs and tags in store. Every $35 you spend gets you one admission. Jordan Moore, John Jackson, we got the whole pregame crew here. Sean Cody joining us now. Uh, Sean, we just needed to call you in, man. We needed your energy, your, your positive uh, mindset. Hey, maybe we'll get to some of that first. Uh, first, I need your defensive line expertise because this game in the end was decided by the fact that one team could run the football and the other could not. It's not like USC didn't know Notre Dame was going to run it. That's what they came in telling you they were going to do. Why couldn't they stop it? What were you seeing up front that just wasn't happening? Well, uh, I think first and foremost, uh, some physical beats up front. You know, guys were uh, – some new guys were in there. You get a young guy like uh, Brandon Peely, first time really starting yep. the game and, and uh, it, going against uh, – uh, going and watching the game, about a tremendous Notre Dame offensive line. These guys are – You were you know, impressed by them. Future NFL players. Yep. That left side of their line just looks a step above uh, some of the talent we played. And, and uh, they were really physical. So I think Notre Dame had a great game plan. I think the bye week really helped. Uh, they really spread it out early and then kind of attacked the run. I thought that first drive they had or the second drive they had where they spread the ball around, hit a play action pass, really opened up SC's defense, and then they were able to attack, I think, in the run game. And it, it was just kind of a – then it kind of got out of control and just kind of rolled away. You know, we talked about offensive line injuries earlier this year and the continuity it takes to play the offensive line. But on the defensive side, you sort of times sort of not think that there's an integrity there that has to, it has to happen. You mentioned Brandon Peely getting his – First opportunity, along with several other guys, Malik Dorton is, you know, is playing more than he was at the beginning of the season. How tough is it, defensive line wise, to gain that continuity, and how necessary is it? Well, I think it has to do a lot with Cam Smith too. Getting a read at linebacker with guys you play in front of you is probably the biggest part for linebackers. They got to know what they expect to. Get. Well, I mean, if we talk to Cam, I'm sure he knows exactly uh, what a Josh Fatu is going to do, where he's going to be, if he sees him getting beat, how can he cover him, how can he help him? And you just don't have that experience when you have a, a, a Brandon Peely in there or uh, some of the other guys. So it's it's just that I think that's another level of looking at it like it must be tougher cam to have someone new in front of him when he can't get that read it's like it's like reading a fullbacks block for a running back you, you know where he's going to go you know what he's going to do and you don't have that you know that continuity you don't know what's going to happen though. and the other issue was yeah okay there were the design runs there were some issues we knew josh adams was, was going to be good but he basically posted the same numbers he posted in a losing effort in the coliseum last year the difference was the quarterback yep. and you know, we always sort of talk about this it's all they wanted to do was make Wimbush a thrower. But even in long down and distances, when he went back on design pass plays, they didn't get home. And sometimes it looked like they weren't trying to get home. But they still also couldn't corral him when he improvised. Yeah. What? Why were they not able to maintain – simply just not athletic enough to, to be able to corral him? Or why were they not able to maintain their, their lanes? Because – Two weeks from now, they're facing a guy who's a better runner than yeah. Brandon Wimbush. I'm not saying Wimbush isn't a, isn't a big-time player, but Khalil Tate is the best running quarterback in college football, and he's coming in two weeks. I think they did a good job of uh, really containing Achenna Nwosu. You know, Achenna's been really our play, game. Our, our, our really our biggest playmaker, I think, on defense all year. And he, I think they had an eye on kind of stopping him, shutting him down. And once we didn't have that playmaker available to, to make those plays in space, uh, a lot of our guys aren't suited to run around in space like that, to, to make plays on, on Wimbush. So it made that tough. Uh, and, and give him credit. I thought he made some great throws in that game. And, and really, you know, when you when a quarterback's throwing and running like he was, making that dual threat, it's, it's really really hard for Clancy to call the game like that. Yep. What do you do when he's also uh, hitting us with deep bombs and then he's running around? So it's, it makes it a tough call, but it really starts with a rush with them, and it's just uh, an aggressive attack. And when they, like I said, when they opened up our defense and we had to think about other things besides stopping the run, it, I think it really challenged us on many levels. Okay, so get inside Clancy's head, and you sort of have to play with the hand you're dealt, right? The USC players are, you know, who they are. Yeah. What do you see from this team that needs to improve or what aspect needs to be coached differently or coached up or adjustments that need to be made to get this Trojan defense back to playing the way it were weeks ago. I, I see a, a, what's tough to watch, I think, as a former player is, is the physicality that we're, what we're getting beat on. And I think I think if you watch the film, it's it's the physical aspect. And it's and it's hard to make those kind of adjustments in season because especially with the schedule I think we have, you know, we, without a bye week and with some of these tough opponents, uh, we don't know how much we want to you know put out there. But at some point you have to challenge these guys in practice and say, hey, we're getting beat physically. What are we going to do? Are we going to do it? Does it take suiting up in pads? Does it take? Does it take? You know, running. Uh, you know, Oklahoma drills. Does it take running at nine on seven all practice to get more physical to get these guys more looks at being physical? Because it just looks at. If I watch that game, 
Notre Dame beat us physically, and you got to – how do we change that in midseason? And it, I'm, I'm not a coach. I'm not a – but what works for your guys, you have to find out. And I think if you look at Clay's rep, uh, report, he's, he's been able to do that in the past. What's wrong? Can we fix it? And let's fix it. And I think he'll look at that and say, hey, we weren't physical enough. What does it take to fix it this week in practice, and, and, and can we do that? And from your own experience in terms of the teams you played on, you know, at any level – what gets the most out of you to be the physical player that you need to be, you know, in the past? What did coaches do with you? Was it was it more run drill? Was it more physicality? Uh, yeah, but the, the coaches, <laughs> the coaches I played with, I don't know if you remember uh, Ed Ogeron or uh, some of these guys, but it was never less. It okay. was, <laughs> it was well, never. Uh, let's do less next okay. week. Okay, but maybe you guys need a break. <laughs> they need to take off the pad. No, we, I think we put, we turned up more. We would do more hitting drills. More. It was more. It was always more uh, the next week, and that was in any level in the NFL. It's when you have a bad week and that you coming back off that that next week you know jj it's it's just yeah. uh it's going to be a, it's a nightmare to get back on the field you can't wait to the next game because usually that next game is easier than the yeah, practice that's right. week. so <laughs> it's 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 definitely a it's a, it was always a oh man it was and no one's walking around with their heads up right now well, what is coach o gonna do this week oh, man, what, what kind of what kind of drills he gonna dream up or we're killing each other so it was it was quite it would, it would be that kind of week yeah uh as promised, can you finish with some kind of opti optimism? Because I look around on the bandwagon, Sean, and it's uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's pretty empty. There were a lot of people on it going into the season, but now it's a, a playoff game on Saturday, and I feel like it's run a little dry. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, it, it's hard. It, game eight, and you see that kind of performance, it's it, it makes a lot of people question a lot of things, and you're going to get a lot of, of flack. But I think what Clay, like I said, what Clay's done before in some of these tough situations, you look at one and three last year, and what he was able to do and have those guys buy in and not – because you get players who want to start, you know, jumping the ship. Like, oh, is our, is our coaching making the right decision? Yep. Are, are we doing this on the right decision? Belief, general but, belief. Is yeah, fantastic. but but I but I think what, what what Clay's done in the past is he'd be able to corral these guys, keep them on focus, say, hey, we still got things in front of us that we can accomplish, goals at Pac-12 championship uh, that can be accomplished. So look at those kind of things, and 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 I think he's he's done that in the past, so we can kind of believe in that in that direction. All right, this is your uh, pregame show trio. The the kick time is 7:45 on Saturday on ESPN LA 7:10 right here you can hear us actually at seven o'clock you can want the whole pregame on saturday go to tune in starting at 5 45 that's when we will go on air from tempe all right we're going to talk golf next men's coach chris zambri in the house on trojans live <laughs>